hello welcome to part two of poverty kills the spirit okay um i hope that you stopped in and watched uh, part one where we had a wonderful discussion on um poverty and violence and crime and how it affects it I am so happy that you found me and I found you, and I think it is a divine connection here. There's no mistakes or coincidence, and it's divine timing that you found me. If nothing here I say resonates with you, maybe it becomes a seed planted and finds fertile soil and time to come and grow into a plant and a beautiful flower. I also tell you that I'm doing this by my phone and sometimes I'll get a random phone call and it stops my video. But I promise you I will pick up uh, right at the interruption and to complete it. So just bear with me on that. Um, what else do I want to say? I am an author of three books. Most of the things that I discuss are within my books that I've written that you can get on Amazon.com. When Will E Be Forgiven? The Politics of Prayer and The Want to Be Gardener. They are great reads and they uh, elicit discussions in a wide range of topics. I encourage men, uh, red pill men, um, men that feel emasculated, maybe to do a reading with this. It's not to change you. It may even validate what you're feeling in some places or get you to foul down the corners or something you feel very strongly through your passion. It just will be even more discussion to bring you men together. Same thing with women. You should discuss this amongst yourselves to become a fully whole person, um, to know that you hold your head with pride and dignity, even while... Christianity say you are cursed and it's your fault that man your fault that man has to work now and tell him that you were the origin of sin. Um, we just I just look at all of that in my books. I break it down to the Hebrew and Greek languages, which I do not do here. Um, so um, this is a surface conversation. Then I, my books are more in depth conversation, and then when people are added together, questioning and turning it over and looking and discussing it. That is three levels of enlightenment, uh, three levels of increase in knowledge and understanding. It's a great thing. And like I said, in 2020, this is a time we should be learning, becoming wise and understanding our universe and how we function and relate with everything. So I just encourage you to subscribe, hit the thumbs up, like, Hit the notification button and comment, okay? So let's get back where I left off at. And this is where we're going to see that the Bible insists that the best test of a nation's righteousness is how it treats the poorest and most vulnerable in its midst. We keep talking about we are number one. We are a superpower. America is a superpower. And this right here by Jim Wallace says, a nation's righteousness. So if you're not only looking at wealth, we may be a mega, uh, a mega country, not mega country. What is it called? Whatever it's called. But we may be considered the top echelon out of all uh, countries. If we're looking at material things, if we're looking at wealth and ingenuity and uh, our diplomacy but as far as righteousness being right with god being right with mankind being right with um posterity being right with the future of the nation it is seen in how we treat the poorest and most vulnerable in our midst we cannot have true balanced um greatness if we treat people incorrectly. There's nothing worse than walking in over and around the downtrodden. And your spirit changes when you're able to do that. Something in you changes when you're not able to do that. And imbalance people is living in, they say mental illness is when something you're doing or believe interferes with your well-being, you're able to carry out regular tasks, interact with people, 
uh, maintain your own stability. So for that reason, mental illness is one thing. Do this, this, and this, and you're mentally ill. It's some people, things interrupt their lives and they can't function. And other people have the same thing and it doesn't interrupt their life. So when you yourself, your thoughts, your actions, your views harm you, that's mental illness. And to not take care of the poor and vulnerable, that is unbalanced and it is going to interfere in your well-being. You think it doesn't have an effect on you because you're a millionaire, billionaire, or the higher echelon in money, you get make a hundred thousand plus a year, and so the poverty does not touch you, it's touching your country, your nation. Republicans are now saying, look at California, how horrible it is, how destructive it is, how it's a drug den, poverty den, homeless den. And that's a, that is a state in our United States. We forget the United. California is a downtrodden is part of our being now. It's a chain in our, it is a link in our chain. And if we keep getting more links, more links, and more links, our chain is not strong anymore. It's not effective. So you think this is a funny point at that's them, not me kind of thing. But that poverty migrates. Poverty migrates and it branches out into areas, okay? So when we treat the poor as the most vulnerably bad, it's not right with God's plan for us and it's not right for a nation's plan, plan to be prosperous and continue to be a leader in the world. So we have to understand that. And Republicans are saying these are Democrat-ran states. None of that matters. None of that has to do with righteousness. Nothing. They don't have to do anything with passion. So you're saying, so separate those out because they belong. It's just more and more and more breaks in our link. The United States needs to stay united and united in compassion and care encouragement, edification, spirit work to stay well. We are a sick nation now, okay? Poverty causes stress, insecurity of food, housing, income. It increases the risk of mental health problems, substance abuse, and parents, child abuse. Once those parents become substance abusers, Usually, child abuse and neglect come, high crime and violence rate. All of that, and if we're seeing that all over our nation, it is because of poverty. You can say it's no home training. It is also the breakdown of the nuclear family, but poverty breaks the spirit. Broken people who cannot move, who are, are just stunted, and what if we did the mannequin mannequin challenge? They're mannequins. Their spirit is of a mannequin now. They cannot move forward. And you see, we have the crime, and everybody keeps talking, oh, Chicago's so violent, Chicago's so violent. And everybody knows because of poverty and broke spirits. But we just want to say they're animals. When will they stop their animal? They will stop when there's more hope in their lives. And hope does not mean handouts. When there's more hope in their life, when there's more nurturing of the child, when we start from that scratch, the program, the WIC program, um, when babies were born, they gave them nutritious food so the brain would develop better. And they did that what, till a year of age. We still need for our children to be nurtured in spirit and poverty kills spirit okay we think it's a person need to do it it is a community now a state a country that needs to step in you identify the problem and then the solution follows people want to make definitions of the problem and say there are no solutions and blame the impoverished. It's blaming the rape victim. We have a tendency to do that, okay? So it's increase in crime and violence rate and prolonged exposure to poverty turn into disruptions in brain functioning, okay? 
it's disruptions. The brain doesn't have time to develop because it's always fearful. It's always wondering when the next meal is going to come. It's also wondering when the next bully or, or violent crime that will happen to you come. It is, uh, can I sleep at night without my parents fighting or leaving me and going for drugs and stuff? Okay, strong relationship between hardship and depression. <sighs> Poverty has a strong, strong relationship between hardship and depression. We know that. We know that. Your spirit is broken. It's depressed. Hardships such as paying bills and phones being turned off. And it's like phone is a luxury. Phone is a luxury. It's not a luxury anymore. It's your way of staying con connected to the world, to help assistance, to firemen, policemen, to somebody. Maybe we now have counseling, psychiatric counseling online and stuff. And when they lose a the phone, they lose their connection to life now. That's how important a phone is. People really will have some function uh, problems if they don't have a phone. So paying bills right now through this pandemic, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord. People are being evicted from their homes because they cannot pay their bills because of the coronavirus, their jobs have um, fired them or furloughed them and even if they wanted to work they're afraid of being infected or infecting their elderly parents or young children this right now this is a poverty coronavirus poverty it should have a name i mean hashtag that coronavirus poverty hashtag it for me and send it to other people that's what we are in spirits are being broken mental illness is increasing we know uh, uh spousal abuse and Domestic violence is increasing. Children are afraid, don't know what to do. It is horrible out here, people. We have to do something for this poverty spirit. We must care about our neighbor for this state to continue. We see that it is weakening. People keep saying that it's um, unpatriotic to say that America is not what it used to be. It's unpatriotic to lie and turn your face away from what is occurring. Mental illness is on the rise, and we're going to have to address that. Uh, yeah, crime, it says when there's poverty, crime increases. You know, you can name them hoodlums, whatever. And also, we have all these marches now. Um, poverty uh, makes a revolution. It's all here. You would have to just be willfully ignorant not to acknowledge what's happening and decide to become part of the cure become part of the cure and that's what the rest of the 2020 can bring into your lives our lives community lives state lives and nationally it's the choice we have to make now people and thank god you can make choices and make decisions and it's not some hard-to-reach universal thing. Starting with being kind, understanding, and compassionate. That costs nothing. It, it, it doesn't strain you either. So I hope people are looking. I hope this video is shared so we can get in here and say 2021, here we come. We're doing our work now. There's going to be a change. We're not going to hope for a change. We are the change that we want to see 2021 and beyond, okay? Adults without high school degrees have more stress mentally and income below $20,000. We know 2020 has shown that people are working 40, 50 hour work day, work weeks, and they cannot go out and have live in an apartment or rent anywhere. They are poor and even working 40 hours a week plus and cannot be independent. Uh, the millennials who went to college have wonderful degrees and are smart. So you can blame um, poverty on those who are not educated. But millennials who have gone and educated themselves and got degrees cannot find jobs to work. So they're with their parents. They are impoverished. Millennials are in poverty. That's a whole generation. And people are saying it's just uh, those college kids really don't want to work. Those college kids are too smart to work. Millennials are in poverty. 
coronavirus poverty hashtag coronavirus poverty okay so anybody that think they're living um with twenty thousand dollars with more than two people in the household there's some damaging going on to the spirit and so without high school degrees there's more stress mentally a lot of people say oh they just flunked out they didn't want to go to school they didn't get a diploma these people are suffering mentally and then you say well if you would have stayed in school there are a lot of factors why people do not finish school and there's one thing that the family doesn't encourage it the community doesn't encourage it even the state don't encourage it. you can look at Louisiana Alabama Mississippi those three Bible Belt places do not encourage education they really discourage it and I don't care I can get comments Mississippi Louisiana Alabama you can contact me leave a comment and say I'm wrong and I may look it up and break it down and just to see if I'm wrong I don't get angry about the comments it just gives me another another topic to discuss and research so if you're saying that is just horrible to say that Louisiana, Alabama, and Mississippi really do not support education as a state, let me know, please. And let, let my followers know. It's not just me. People that are my uh, subscribers would like to hear, oh, she, she just told a story, big ass lie on Alabama, Louisiana, and Mississippi. Poverty affects children. Research shows that these children have altered brain connectivity and changes in the hippocampus, which is a structure key to learning, memory, and regulation of stress. They have altered brain connectivity in the hippocampus, if, which is a structure to key to learning. That's why they're sitting in that classroom out of these violent homes and out of hunger they come from and they're not learning there are connectivity problems to learn they have memory problems sometimes you put things in your short-term memory and your long-term memory and if your long-term memory is about poverty being hungry and violence and so uh, drug use this this stuff about spelling math algebra and history is will not be deposited there and even if you wanted to there's connectivity problems in your memory and regulation of stress it is so crazy we don't why gang members be just shooting 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 shoot they have a problem with regulation of stress and that mob mentality we all so poor we never can get over the man keeping us down women hate us they trying to get rid of us all of that stress and i'm going to say on the african American male leads to problems and also the medigula it's linked to stress and emotion and it's affected it's a brain component that helps you with stress and regulating emotion in brain scans those connections were weaker depending on the degree of poverty and increased chances of childhood depression That there is a big ass knowledge drop. That there is a big ass wisdom drop. That there's Oprah Winfrey say was an aha moment. The brain is not even capable of functioning at its basic best because of poverty. Uh, there's no words for that. Our children are mentally impaired, depressed, anxious, and violent. And the word that wise adults have is, you need to stop. Why don't you go to school? Why don't you look harder for a job? These people don't even have, poverty broken spirits don't even have the components within them to move further and sometimes it's just more secure security and not feeling you're the only one to stay in the soup of poverty and not get out 
it's familiar, you act the same, no one is pointing at you saying how different you are, how far behind you are in any kind of development. Sometimes it's better to stay in a suit. And they stay there and hope to meet, get to their 21st birthdays. Hope to get to 30. And something has to change. We know the problem, but there are not enough people willing to be a part of the solution. And like I said, I don't have to be grand. Part of the solution can start right now with this video saying I'm going to be different, transformed from spiritually, mentally, physically, going into 2021. I am working on this problem. I am aware, now I will implement and do something. If it's nothing but clean up myself and be more kind and compassionate in how I speak about people and to people. One step, one step, Lord have mercy, helps your family. One step helps you in your relationship with your husband and partner. One step helps your relationship with baby mama, baby daddy. And even that is not easy. It's, it's sad that it's not easy to be genuinely kind, genuinely compassionate, because it's not being demonstrated an example for us anymore. Even the church speaks, but it doesn't implement this in their neighborhood, in their individual families of the parishioners, in their county, in their state. Even the church has dropped the ball, ball on poverty. We still want the tithes. Give God a tithe, but we won't implement, use, put to good use of compassion and kindness those tithes. They want the tithes to make it a bigger, more comfortable club, uh, country club environment but that is not wisdom that is not intellect you're not putting what you know into motion for solutions you can talk about it forever but sometimes people need an example let me see i see implementation this person is so wise look what they get done i can follow this dictate and i can come out better but as long as talk is talk there's people on there uh, porch stoop talking. There's people sitting on cars at the gas station talking. It's a lot of talk everywhere. The news talks. Even the news don't implement anything. And so we're just supposed to report. Well, I hope they decide to report some implementation from the news station on, on something. I'm sorry. I. History is written by the rich, and so the poor get blamed for everything. Jeffrey Sachs said that. Jeffrey Sachs said, history is written by the rich, and so the poor get blamed for everything. I don't even need to go into that. Everybody knows that's the truth. The poor is not writing about how families died and wealthy people walked by, and they let the country get destroyed. No. Rich people say, look at me, I got the American dream, I made and I got money, and those poor people ain't even trying, and they devaluing my, my property value. History is written by the rich, and so the poor get blamed for everything. When a poor person dies of hunger, it has not happened because God did not take care of him or her. It happens because neither you nor I wanted to give that person what he or she needed. That's the, we are unwilling to give anyone what he or she needs. We blame them. And Mother Teresa said that. Poverty of goods is easily cured. Poverty of the mind is irreparable. Michael of Montagu said that. Did you hear that profound? Poverty of goods is easily cured. I got clothes in my closet. I can easily give uh, people homeless, those who can't afford clothes, I can give them clothes, I can give them shoes, I actually can give them bed sets. There are a lot of material dish sets. There are so many material things that I can give and others can give. You got 17 blenders uh, still in your house and you won't give it to anybody. Nothing you have you're willing to part with to uh, give people what they need. But poverty of the mind 
is irreparable. It does damage, long-term damage, poverty of the mind, no hope, hopelessness, helplessness, no tenacity, no um, bounce back. I can't give you that. I can example it and hope you look at it and incorporate it into your life. I can give bullet points, and like I say, the brain don't even have connectivity for the people, that's the poor people. I can do all of that. But it's very hard for me to restore you. That's what I'm saying. We know what's going on in Chicago. We know it's a hot spot for violence and uh, high murder rates. Jackson, Mississippi in the same way, and it's about poverty. And it's hard to tell those people that live there that this does not have to be your life. When that's the only example they've had, it's what has been stored in them, and they're coming from a place of less um, within themselves mentally hormonally, chemically, there's a whole bunch to make a person whole, to address. And them believing that it can happen is one thing, just believing. But these people don't believe anyone would care and reach out to them. Churches, I'm talking about you too. I'm, I, I'm not bashing churches. Please don't ever think, I think it's wonderful to have church, a place to go to worship. It helps build you up. It helps put you in remembrance of the word. It shows that you are a person who believes and have faith in God. It's all wonderful. But all of that needs to be implemented. All that blessing you have, all that hope you have, it needs to be your cup running over people. Some of y'all's cups run over and you say, I'm truly blessed. So now your cup is running over. What are you doing with the overflow? You hoarding it somewhere you hoard your overflow. So that means saying it, it's poverty of the mind is irreparable. There's going to be damage from poverty. People say, it's in your past, let it go. It is in your DNA and makeup now. Your subconscious is way harder to, uh, to change. And we don't even know all the trauma and mysteries and remembrance our subconscious have that is triggered by spell, smell and you right back where you were one day had ate in a month and you were smelling the neighbors cooking hot dogs and you were starving. Um, a sound could trigger you again. They call it uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. Our brains are put in our self-conscious all the things that we wanted to run from, all the things we feared we would die from. It goes there more so than the things that made us joyful and happy. We have, to every one good memory, I believe we have a thousand bad traumatic memories. So, this is hard, hard. Now, here are some synonyms for what the human spirit means. Human spirit can mean your human mind. What's going on in there? Like you say, some damaged connectivities there. Human soul. It is what makes you who you are. It's that place that you are and everything come out of. Spirit of man. The spirit of man, is, we say, is what he can do. He can go to the moon if he think, if he can try. All of this we say in poverty hurts. Human life. Life itself is seen as spiritual. I am open to possibilities, try, uh, uh, divine interference, a guardian angels, that stuff. Human heart, the heart is your spirit. And when men and women go through so many breakup, bad relationships, being used, tossed aside, their heart is so damaged. And did you notice their spirit is damaged and they just can't try again to try to love? The so broke human brain, the human psyche. Um, that's why I say I, I say a lot. My philosophy, my philosophy, my philosophy. Each person gets up in the morning, and the who they are in essence, and how they interact with men, how they interact with women, how they interact with children, how they interact with that is your core, your worldview and philosophy of how you're going to interact. You can change it. It's a psyche. It's what you develop and say. This is how. Um, life and uh, the universe work, but many people don't think about this psyche. Soul of man, human thought. The spirit, human spirit can be human thought. What we put in, what we take in is what we put out. Garbage in, garbage out. Garbage thoughts, garbage action. That's what I'm saying. 
um, when hopelessness and helplessness happen, their human thoughts are changed. They're thinking some other kind of way. It's, it's changed. Humanitarianism, um, human intellect, uh, being able to retain information and use it and analyze it and put it in action, that is poverty mess setup. Humanism, mankind, mortal soul. Some people, their spirit is so broken, they, you hear them say, I'm not going to live to be 30. Oh, I'm probably going to be shot by I'm 22. I'm not expecting to live long. Their mortal soul is changed. Their mortal spirit is changed. You can use the mind of man, human reason. The spirit is human reason. My spirit connects with you. Your reason pulls me and draws me and excites me. It stimulates me. So human reason, human intelligence, kindness, the spirit that is damaged is not kind. And I had a damaged spirit, oh man, 2019. I had a damaged spirit and I was not kind to a, one person in particular and I had to start working on me August 2019 because I was a person I didn't recognize. I never recognized myself as a black heart, unkind person. And I'm like, how did this occur? How did this happen? But that was done with pain and rejection. And that thought, human thought I was going in, it was just pain in and pain out, pain in and pain out. And that's what we say, hurt people hurt people. So where the violence is, hashtag hurt people hurt people, right? We know. Now what's the solution? We don't want to give them what they need to be unhurt. And in my uh, darks, uh, night of the soul, I asked for what I needed to be to help me mend from hurt and, and pain. And it was like, no, I'm not going to give you that. And that's what we do to these big children that are suffering depression and poverty. It's like, I hear you asking, but no, I'm not going to give it to you. No, I'm not going to give you any pain relief. I'm not going to give you any emotional and mental security. Forget physical all right? I'm not paying for you a house. I'm not paying for yourself. I'm okay. But are you giving them any help for pain, for hopelessness, for the dark night of the soul when there's nothing but darkness within the heart and no kindness can come out? When I was feeling dark and pain and bitter, I was unkind. And I could not stop myself from being unkind. I was praying and everything to stop being unkind to this person. And I just couldn't. And the person said, you have so much hate and contempt for me. Why should I talk to you? And it was true. And I didn't like who I was. And it wasn't up to that person to fix me. Even though that's what I thought I needed so much. Just one word and... I would be fixed by you. It was up to me to fix myself to know what I want to be and how I want to present myself. And I wanted to be a kind, compassionate person. I did not want to be someone of words of unkindness and pain and abuse just came from me no matter what. When I was stressed, when I felt rejected, when I felt inferior. I had to stop taking in those things and say, I'm not that myself. And so I don't give that junk in, junk out, okay? So spirit is so many things. I listed those. Then you ask yourself, and mankind has asked this, and I don't know if this will answer it or not, but I'm going to say it. And people ask, what part of the body is the soul? And we say soul and spirit, you know, interchangeably. My soul worship, my soul feels joy. My spirit worship, my spirit feels joy. We interchange those synonyms. But the question is, what part of the body is the soul? The soul or the Atman is credited with the ability to enliven the body. 
people who are going through poverty are not enlivened. There's no energy of happiness. There's no energy of joy. There's no energy of contentment radiating from them. And I know that people feel auras, if that's what you want to say, or the energy of a person. This person is so happy. Every time I see them and you get there and you're happy, that energy crosses. But the soul of man is credited with this ability to enliven. So the soul is credited for this, the spirit in life. You said, my spirit feels good. You're reaching yourself. I'm going to have a spirit of kindness. I'm going to have a spirit of love. You're enlivening yourself as a body of love. You're enlivening yourself as a body of compassion, okay? And it said it was located by ancient anatomists who studied the anatomy, ancient anatomists and philosophers so we look people that looked at us anatom anatomically and then philosophically that of the mind pondering trying to understand beyond just concrete facts but also saying this blends in this blends in this is a state of freedom not box facts are so box philosophy is always open to be in in made better, more understood, and be open and receive it. That's what philosophy. So people that study the Bible, uh, body and philosophers say the spirit is located in the lungs or hearts or in the pineal gland, which we call the third eye where the pineal glass sit right there and people say I want to activate my third eye I want to see what others don't see I want to be uh, enlightened enlivened in my spirit they want to live as a spiritual being that is um, hopeful faithful never giving up tenacious knowing that I don't have to look at this short term consequence. I can see beyond and I can shape that beyond as far as it including me. I can have long term thoughts and goals and be a create a co creator with the creator or in my environment or in my family. It just expands you. The pineal glands that I'm open to knowledge, intellect and wisdom and I am gonna apply it in my life so i am enlivened with the breath because spirit in the bible was that breath he breathed into adam to make him alive so the hebrew word for spirit in the creation of adam is i breathe air life into you so when we open up our pineal gland we're breathing life into ourselves okay so it also say and it's generally in the brain so that's why the definition of spirit is so hard that's why spirit when it's crushed is just really destructive to to you all right i'm gonna stop there a little over my time but i'm hoping that some of this made you think some of it made you want to subscribe to my channel make you discuss this with someone leave a thought in the comments and hit that thumbs up button as always. I say it's no coincidence that you stop with me and that we discuss this this uh, topic. And I want to say a quick prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray right now for all those homeless people on the street who don't have any hope anymore, who have given up and cannot see a future. We pray, Lord, for those who did have means and then the hurricane. Lord, come by and now they are put in an impoverished position and their spirit is also dampened. Dear Lord, we pray for the children, the millennial generation who cannot even sustain themselves in a society and throw away their care for those that are struggling and want to improve. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray for these poor children, Lord, that they get more examples in their youth of how life is supposed to be joyous and well and good. Even though income may be different, that there's more meaning and then we can move towards that. We see in this uh, video that their mind is damaged, their uh, hormones and other stimulants that are activated by the hypoglamis and amygdala 
are damaged and they have difficulty in brain connective dear lord let there be someone in their life who care and have compassion and that this poverty will cease this violence and murder if we can just look and say let me give them what they need i see the need and i won't stop and give dear heavenly father we just praise you let's be with those who are getting evicted because of the hashtag coronavirus poverty let hearts change, let minds change, let us grow in 2020 as we have stopped in our tracks and become a better, kind person, compassionate person in 2021. We ask this in, in your name, Heavenly Father. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for being with me.